Wednesday, Delmarva. Thanks for joining us. We're your hosts of Coast Life. I'm Paige Marley. I'm Leah Rizzo. And if you've been spending some time on the internet lately, mm -hmm. perhaps you've seen this video. Look at my dog. <laughs> Now, Paige, I know that kangaroos are dangerous. I mean, like that's something that I've heard mm -hmm. that like they'll they'll square up if oh, you're not yeah. ready. <laughs> it's it's unnerving the way that that kangaroo was jacked. Right. I always forget how strong they are. It's. I feel like they have little gyms wherever they live that we don't know about where they're just <laughs> deadlifting all day and we don't know about it. The Outback Gyms. The Outback Gyms. That was crazy. And but kudos to that dog for keeping his cool for the most part. I wonder how the kangaroo got a hold of the dog. Like, did the dog just start swimming? Right. Did the kangaroo, like, grab him and run? Like, how did they get yeah. into that exact scenario? I know that kangaroos will sometimes, like, wait in the water. No way. Yeah, I think they do. And, like, just, like, their heads are popping up. They're oh. crazy. So I'm suddenly scared of kangaroos. You, I think we should be. I think we should. Honestly, respect. I mean, luckily we have our, our skills from Seaside Krav Maga and Lewis, but I don't know what those would do against a kangaroo. I, I don't know, because all, you know, all rules are off. <laughs> all bets are off, but you better believe something's coming over me where if that kangaroo has my dog, I might have a chance of winning. I think that is kind of what, what happened in that yeah. scenario, too, where, like, when, when a loved one, be mm -hmm. it your, your pup or your kids or anybody that yeah. you love is in danger, the blood starts running, you're, you know, you're, you're in fight-or-flight mode, and if you choose fight, kangaroos going down. Yeah, all right, kangaroos, they <laughs> are um, not the cute, cuddly animals we all thought they were. No, no Lesson not. learned. <laughs> But uh, we talked about uh, wedding registries earlier yeah. this week. Yeah. Um, gifts that were appropriate. Maybe people are throwing too many parties. This actually was uh, well received. Mm -hmm. And I think we were talking also about wedding registries, how they're sort of falling to the wayside as yeah. more couples kind of move in together before they get married. Yeah. They already have all the stuff that you would traditionally ask for. Right. Your crock pots, your, your uh, plates, your plates, your yeah. silverware, all that kind of stuff. Usually both couples kind of say, hey, I've got my plates. Like, yeah. I'm here now. Right. <laughs> We're good. Maybe that was just me. <laughs> no, me too. Um, but this couple put the uh, husband's or husband to be's speeding ticket. I love it. On the wedding registry, it was over two hundred dollars. It was like a two hundred and thirty-one dollar ticket, and so um, they put like fund towards speeding ticket on the knot. I kind of love it. <laughs> People were digging it. People were yeah. saying like, "This is a gift I can get behind." Right. Especially like you just got married. Maybe you're going on a honeymoon. Expenses are up. Like that is honestly something I wouldn't mind paying for my friends because it's useful. Right. It's not just another ceramic plate off of Amazon that they want because they're cute. Like, yeah, I'll help you pay your speeding ticket off. Go enjoy your honeymoon. Yeah. yeah. And that's kind of what I think, like, maybe is what we're trending towards are mm -hmm. more useful. Is It's mostly just money now because, like, again, people yeah. have all the stuff. Yeah. For the most part, maybe if you were going to look towards like a renovation sure. or, you know, maybe a, a nicer bed, like some sort of yeah. big life purchase that maybe you would put some money towards. Yeah. But then otherwise, yeah, I think most people, money goes a lot farther than most of those gifts. It does, definitely. I think it's one of those things where it's okay to get a gift card or just cash. I know sometimes people don't like that, but I would never mind a gift card. Um, I was telling you two, two weddings I went to recently and both didn't really have registries. It was just if you want to give a gift. Um, donate to their honeymoon fund or one of them was donate to our house renovation fund mm -hmm. and I did feel a lot better I didn't have to bring a gift to mm -hmm. the wedding I could just I did some cash online before we got there I yeah. think I donated to honeymoon for one renovations for the other and I feel good too knowing my money's going yeah. towards something fun because like cards are nice like yeah. I always pick up a card and I'll write a nice message to yes. my friends but yeah it's always money because I'm always that person that waits to the last minute and uh -huh. all the good gifts are gone yep. and then I'm like oh, I'm dang it oh I did it on the way to the wedding yeah, yeah. that was also so. convenient yeah, well, and my, my best friend from high school, like, we've gone to all of our high school friends' weddings together, and she's always like, remember to get a card, because, like, she knows me too well, and she's like, don't forget, and so, like, we'll go get them together. Like, she, oh, yeah, she makes, she keeps me on track. Yeah, I do like that. It makes sense. Like you said, people, not as many people are living together before marriage, so yeah, it just kind of saves you the time and money. I think so. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, you know, we, we shared one viral video with you already. I love this one. <laughs> Maybe here's another one that you've been seeing cycling on TikTok. Uh, there's a girl who downed 48 oysters. <laughs> At a, on a date. On a date. A so, first date, right? A, a first date, yeah. So listen, listen. I'm just going to sh 
there's an exception to every rule because you guys know me and I am this, I'm not picking up that bill. I'm not touching <laughs> it. In this case, I'm on the guy's side. This girl on a first date, she downed 40 oysters, which I don't know, a dollar an oyster. So at least 50 at least, bucks, right? Yeah. And by herself, this was not like a shared appetizer. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> she also ordered like multiple, multiple drinks and appetizers and everything. And she said the guy that took her on the date, he ordered an entree maybe and mm -hmm. one drink. So the bill, her bill itself, like her side of the bill was over 200 bucks. Oh no. So he got up and left her and he was like, this is rude, bye. You, yeah, you he's not paying pay. her bill. Yeah, and good for you. Because Seriously. we are not a we're not about taking advantage of men. No, and I just the thought of sitting there and listening to a new person that you've just met oh. slurp forty eight oysters. And uh. do you know how sloshy your stomach has to feel? <laughs> like you have to <laughs> it's making me nauseous. Why did I say I hate that? It. <laughs> Why did I say that? Ew. Ugh, My so eyes like, are getting watery. <laughs> <laughs> so the internet's been having a lot of fun, you know, mm -hmm. picking whose side are you on. Looks like everybody's really siding with the guy on this yeah. one, but the jokes have just been phenomenal. And oh, like everywhere I turn, I feel like I'm seeing this reference. So if you two are seeing the 48 oysters, uh, that's that's what, what everybody's talking about. Exactly, exactly. I, she really posted a TikTok thinking people would be like, get that check, girl, get that free meal. No, yeah. that's not what we're doing. Yeah. You said uh, the, you think she took it down, right? I, well, I can't find the original anymore. Yeah. So I think maybe she realized, she got roasted <laughs> in the comments, so I think she realized, but people, the internet's forever, they save those videos, so uh, you'll have to do some digging, but you can probably find yeah. it. I do love, though, that like sometimes the internet, like, you know, you see all those videos of either people crying on the internet, or people, like, like it feels like such an attention grab, but every now and then, like, the internet unites to put somebody in their place. Mm -hmm. Jada Pinkett Smith is feeling that right now, too. <laughs> Don't even get me started on the, the every Jada Pinkett Smith joke is they're warranted. They're phenomenal. They're phenomenal. She is, th again, these are just the things that we talk about when we talk about <laughs> feminism and this and that. Jada Pinkett Smith and 48 Oysters Girl, <laughs> you're not good for the movement. Yeah, we, you're setting us back a little you're bit. You're setting us back. That's not what we wanted in feminism. <laughs> no. No, we just want equality. Yeah, that, that's it. <laughs> that's what we're looking for. Yeah. Oh, yeah, but we're yeah. also looking for a great show coming your way. Coast Life's Maya Henry is going to tell us what's coming up today. Coming up today on Coast Life, unearth the excitement and undead fun of Milton Theater's Zombie Fest. Soar amidst the vivid wonders of the kite loft and domestify AI's role in real estate with the Parker Group. All that and more when Coast Life gets back. Coast Life is brought to you by BB Healthcare, Coastal Comfort Heating and Air Conditioning, Preston Automotive Group, Shell Brothers, and the Parker Group. Think about some of your favorite places to go. Maybe just spend time with your family, maybe some of your favorite views. If you're anything like me, many of those favorites are in southern Delaware. They absolutely love the Delaware coast. And so I'm so excited to introduce you today to my friend Scott Thomas with Southern Delaware Tourism. Thanks for being here, Scott. Thanks, Paige. It's good to be here. Yes, definitely. And so I have Scott here today because we're just talking about all things southern Delaware. What makes it so amazing? I have to ask you. As someone who works for Southern Delaware Tourism, yeah. what's your favorite part about Southern Delaware? Oh, it's tough. You know, as our as our uh, you know slogan goes, mm -hmm. beaches are just the beginning. So I got to start with our five star beaches, our beautiful beaches, and and I love being in the water. But there's so much. I mean, I, I like going uh, out. You know, to all of our small towns, mm -hmm. and um, I think I really like some of the. If you go, ever go out to the Nan Nanticoke River and yeah. some like the Broad Creek areas, that's beautiful too. So it's just there's so much. It's hard to hard to to answer that. But you know, yes. it's 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 you know. It's a good problem. It is a good problem to have too many favorites in one area. Right. Uh, something I've learned since living here too is that um, there's really no off season, right? That's people always joke about that. There really is no off season events. They kind of pick up this time of year even, mm -hmm. and that's why you guys are doing something really cool. Each year you have an award ceremony yes. where you give awards to some of the best businesses, events. Uh, just tell us a little bit about this event uh, every year. Well, it, it, you know, it, it's, it's Southern Delaware Tourism's way of honoring all those um, organizations, individuals that, that really, you know, pull it together. They, they, whether they're producing an event um, or, they, you know, they, they, they have a wonderful attraction um, or they're really contributing to, to tourism, mm -hmm. which, you know, which is, you know, the, the leading industry here in Sussex County. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, it's kind of our way of really honoring those on an annual basis to, you know, to, to really, those who make a difference, all those volunteers that are needed, whether it's an event or a new event. And, um, you know, we have a lot of natural beauty here. Yeah. We know that we're lucky. 
But it's also when our visitors come, they tell us, you know, they, they're, they're increasingly telling us that they like all these new things or, or different things to do. We're hearing that. And that's a difference maker because people have a choice when they travel. So all this is really, you know, enhancing tourism here in Sussex County. So we like to uh, honor those with, with these awards. Definitely. I know yeah. you mentioned new. I think it was 2022, the award for, I might mess up the official name, but newest event yeah. was Shellville. Yes. We love Shellville here. So take us Great. through maybe some of the categories sure. people can win and maybe some um, people who have won before, or businesses who have won. Yeah, I mean, we had so, we have so many great entries every year, so we kind of ex expanded it because, yeah. again, uh, the, uh, so we have one for, um, for best event, okay. which would be for, uh, for this year, it would be any, any uh, event taking place from October 2022 mm -hmm. to October 2023, Sussex County based. Mm -hmm. uh, best uh, new event for first time event in that same time frame. Uh, best attraction, um, philanthropic, okay. for those who really you know, contribute to, to, to the, the, the whole environment here to make it more conducive for tourism. And um, tourism partner of the year, okay. which, is, which is a big one because uh, that goes out to um, an organization, business who, who works uh, with us closely or with our uh, respective chambers of commerce mm -hmm. to really make a difference uh, uh, in promoting tourism here. Yeah. yeah, and as you're mentioning those categories, my head already started thinking, oh, my favorite attraction is this, and my favorite new event is this. So if other people are doing the same, can they participate and can they nominate their favorite places, people? Yes, please Great. do. Um, our nominations are open to uh, November 3rd. Okay. So please think about it. It's really easy. All you have to do is go to visitsoutherndelaware.com mm -hmm. Look, uh, look at uh, Tourism Award. Um, it's a quick entry. Uh, you just need a support letter. All the criteria is listed there um, uh, for, uh, for each of those categories mm -hmm. uh, I mentioned. And uh, yeah, get them in by November 3rd. And um, I, I know it's, uh, you know, our, our past award winners, they, 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 use, they use it in their advertising. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's a big deal. You know, it's, it's, it's great recognition. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a privilege to be part of that and to, to really, you know, uh, to award those. Mm -hmm. Definitely, yeah. I've definitely walked by restaurants or stores before and they have kind of that sticker, that stamp outside. Yep. And, and so you know that people, they have yeah. a big fan base, people like them. Yeah. Great, great. So when can we find out the winners? We'll find out the winners, um, I believe around December 13th. Oh, okay, pretty yeah, quick so turnaround. Yeah, it'll be a quick turnaround. Yeah, we have a, we have a uh, gamut of judges. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we, we, we turn around pretty fast and uh, yeah, we all, we all, it culminates at our, at our big awards lunch in December. Yeah. I'm looking forward to yeah. it. Okay, fantastic. So don't forget, just one more time, the website where they can nominate their favorite businesses. www.visitsoutherndelaware.com mm -hmm. tourism-award and uh, or you can just look it up there just in, uh, and that's where you can find it, yep. All right, amazing. Well, start thinking about who you want to nominate, your favorite stores, your restaurants, your, your people, just anything that you, when you think of Southern Delaware, you think of them. You can do that right now. You can do that during the commercial break because we're going to take a little break, but we'll be right back. Well, something you've probably been hearing a lot about, I know I have, is AI, artificial intelligence. And if you don't know a lot about it, it can be a little spooky, maybe a little scary, but the news is really AI can be great in the workplace. It can be really helpful. So to maybe clear out some of your concerns and to talk to us a little bit more about it, we have the Parker Group with us today, of course. So welcome back. Hi, Thank you. thanks. Thanks for being here. Yeah. So first, if someone doesn't know, can you explain to us just kind of what artificial intelligence is? Mm -hmm. What is AI? Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Um, and if you haven't experimented yet with it, uh, you absolutely should. Um, so OpenAI is a company that launched a product called ChatGPT Chat back in November of last year. So we've only had access to this really at a large scale for less than a year. Mm -hmm. um, and since then, it has completely blown up. And so um, what ChatGPT is, is a large language model, meaning you can have conversation with it back and forth, ask it questions, it gives you answers. Mm -hmm. Um, it can strategize with you. It can do all kinds of incredible things. Wow. I know there's some people here in this office that they, I'll see them typing and I see they're texting AI, you know, because <laughs> they're using chat GPT. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I am one of those people that I just don't understand it, right? So yeah. is this something we should be worried about, especially business owners, or is it something that we can use to our advantage? I think it's going to change the entire world and yeah. it's going to happen really fast. And I think <clears throat> there are some like ethical concerns and things sure. I think mm -hmm. that we should be aware of, but I think 
for those that are in business, um, if you don't embrace it, I don't think that you will be in business mm -hmm. uh, for very long. I think it is absolutely the future of where everything is going. We actually just got back from a conference, and it's funny, Dustin was always saying, like, this is as big as when the internet came out. Oh. And at this conference, they said, this is actually as big as electricity or fire. This oh is, gosh. like, the level of this innovation. Mm -hmm. So it is huge, and we've noticed that not a lot of people are talking about it locally, and that's why I wanted to chat about it a little bit today. Lo I love this, yeah, especially because, you know, a lot of people in this area, too, maybe they're a little bit older, um, or they're like me and they just don't understand technology, right? So um, how is the Parker Group going to be utilizing AI or are you going to be it, mm -hmm. utilizing it? Yeah, we've been utilizing it for months now Great. and it has really transformed our business in several different ways. Um, we used to kind of uh, explain ourselves as we were a marketing company that also sells real estate. And we still very much are a marketing company, but now we're kind of shifting a little bit to be a technology company mm -hmm. that sells real estate. And we feel like every single task, every single thing that we do within our company um, has to have some sort of AI integration in it. And so we're spending every single day in it in different ways and continuing to kind of evolve our packages around it. Yeah, it's, it's really incredible the different things that we can do from a real estate perspective. If you think about having like almost like a personal assistant that has yeah. instant access to all the data that exists online. Mm -hmm. And so we think about things like having the most accurate up-to-date pricing information for our clients, coming up with a marketing plan that is tailored to like the exact person that it needs to hit. I mean, they're just the the ways that we can utilize this to make the client experience better mm -hmm. are really exciting to us. And so we're looking forward to continuing to add more and more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like what you said too earlier about the when you went to the conference and you know, this is kind of like the internet or like electricity. It makes me feel a little better because it's like, okay, well those worked out just fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, <Sure. laughs> everything's okay. Right, yeah. exactly, <laughs> everything's okay. So should people be scared? Let's just get that out of the way. No, I don't think people should be scared okay. of it. I think um, we should embrace it and continue <laughs> to learn more and more about it. I think ultimately what this will do is it will eventually make people's lives much better. Mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, there's some products coming out from Tesla and different uh, companies that are going to allow you to have your own personal assistant in your home that mm -hmm. does the dishes, that cuts the grass and makes your life so much easier than what it currently is so that you can spend more time doing the things that you really enjoy. That's perfectly well said. So if people are interested in working with the Parker Group, maybe they don't know a lot about AI, though. Is that something they can feel just comfortable going to you all with? I know you said it kind of um, helps really tailor in on the customer experience. Absolutely, yeah. We, we only visualize using it in ways that make the customer experience better. Mm -hmm. And we, we feel like the great thing about AI is it lets technology do the administrative stuff, mm -hmm. do the data analysis, do the things that it's naturally built for, and frees us up to really jump even deeper into mm -hmm. the human touch and the human connection. Mm -hmm. And so that's where we see it going in our company is yeah. that the mundane tasks are covered by technology and the people tasks are covered by people. That's amazing. That's gonna make, make a lot of people feel really comfortable, I think. Mm -hmm. Make them feel comfortable to reaching out to the Parker Group and working with you all. I know you've kind of put my mind at ease as well. So, <laughs> okay. so thank you, you know. So uh, if you are interested in getting to know more, of course, we are going to have them here every week week. I know, get excited with us. So you get people any questions, of course, reach out to them, but also us too. And, and we'll ask them here. Um, just reach out to team at coastlife.com. And um, I, I'm really excited, like I said, about this, this AI technology. Yeah. So I came in this morning nervous and I'm leaving feeling good. That's the goal. Thanks, guys. <laughs> All right, we have more Coast Life heading your way. So stay right where you are. We'll be right back. You're watching Coast Life and it is the perfect time of the year to fix up the inside and outside of your home. And there's no better place to help us with that than Window World of Delmarva. Let's take a look. Windows, siding, doors, roofs, and more. Window World of Delmarva is the place to give your home a fresh new look. Being the number one home exterior company in the United States proves their work is top of the line. Well, we do siding, windows, doors, roofing, softening and fascia. We're actually the number one exterior home improvement company in the United States. We do everything on the outside of your house that you can feel and touch. If that doesn't change your mind, Chris Thornhill showed us Window World's latest model that will surely make your jaw drop. So if you see the condominium behind me, we did the windows, the siding, uh, the sliding patio doors, the softened fascia, everything you see white and blue and new. A uh, little different design, it's board and batten. It's a called Wedgewood Blue for all those people who would like the exact same color. A mind-blowing transformation is no limit for Window World. As Chris says, the sky's the limit. Dramatic facelift, right? For anybody that's trying to make new curb appeal to their home, you could do it as little as a new entry door. Uh, you could do the whole house and siding. Um, you can spice it up by putting, you know, a decorative awning and shutters on. It sky's the limit to the homeowner and what they're trying to do to their house. A remodel that adds just enough spice makes for a happy homeowner and catches the eye of nearby admirers. 
it's so dramatically different from the old uh, that people just stop by and tell the homeowner how much they like it and how much different it looks. Uh, you have to remember the, the biggest curb appeal you can do to your home is to make it modern and to make it new. Uh, things are outdated, you know, things have faded, you know, whatever it may be. Uh, you put a facelift like this on a window world project, not only do you get a great service, a great warranty, and a great product, uh, we're not going anywhere. So you, you end up with a great company. The homeowner even expresses his gratitude for the project. People that I don't even know want by and they say, man, your place looks great. And uh, which it does, I, you know, I'm pleased with it. And uh, it's definitely been an improvement uh, from the standpoint of insulation, sound. Um, yeah, turned out well. A company that makes intricate improvements makes contacting them a simple task. It's really simple to get a hold of Window World. You can call us direct at our direct line. It's simple as calling 1 800 Next Window. Um, and we come out, we'll give you a free proposal and a free estimate for the project that's on hand. And then you can go ahead and move all forward with the design consultant or spend some time to think about it because usually it's a big purchase. If your home needs the right amount of TLC to bring it back to life, contact Window World of Delmarva. This segment of Coast Life was brought to you by Window World of Delmarva. watching Coast Life and it's no secret that businesses on the Delmarva coast love to give back. At Dogfish Head, what better way to give back than with beer? <laughs> and that is exactly what they're doing right now with this Passion Pride. So when you taste this beer, you're really going to notice the passion fruit. So it's like nice and rich um, and, and tropical. A beer that tastes good and does good. Brewed in partnership with Camp Rehoboth, a nonprofit in Rehoboth Beach that is dedicated to creating a positive environment inclusive of all sexual orientations and gender identities. So every year we, um, we release a quarterly beer and benevolence beer. This is our third year running the program. and We partner with a local nonprofit organization and brew a beer that best represents that organization, sell it, and through our beer and benevolence program make a, a nice donation to that organization. So we partnered with our friends at Camp Rehoboth to uh, create a beer that not only would benefit them financially, but also uh, bring awareness around the community about their organization, teach people about what they do, and also like in the flavor and appearance of the beer, we really wanted to embody the, uh, the spirit and uh, nature of the organization. So when I was working with my friends Terry Seaton and Laurie Thompson from Camp Rehoboth, um, we talked about what they really wanted to embody in this beer. And uh, one of the first things they said was, can we make it purple with butterfly pea flowers? And we said, yeah, of course we can make it purple with butterfly pea flowers. In addition to that, you know, the idea of the passion of the organization and the community that it supports, um, they wanted to make it with, uh, with passion fruit. So what we ended up with is a, is a really beautiful light blonde ale colored purple with uh, butterfly pea, pea flowers, and it has these nice tiki drink vibes from the, uh, the tropical aromas and flavors of the passion fruit. One of the cool things about butterfly pea flower, when you add uh, some sort of acid, um, usually citric acid from a citrus fruit or what have you, it actually goes from a, a rich bluish purple down to a lighter pink purple. It's really a pretty cool. The can even grabs your attention. It's bold and colorful with waves representing the Delmarva coast and disco balls to represent all of the fun events Camp Rehoboth has. In those disco, ball, disco balls, it's reflecting purple, which uh, uh, reflects the color of the beer that sits inside the can. It's always been important to us to give back to the community that has given us so much support over the years since 1995, 1996. So, you know, uh, just giving back when, whenever and however we can is something that's very important to us. All right, and I haven't tried it just yet, so let's, one second. Okay, and you know what? Brian, 100% right. The first thing you taste 
is that passion fruit. So don't forget, you have to get this while supplies last. So what are you doing? Run to Dogfish Head. But not yet, more Coast Life is on the way. Step right up, ladies and gentlemen, because it's not just a carnival, it's zombie fest coming to Milton. <laughs> no, I'm not dressed like a zombie, it's just my face, okay? <laughs> Back off. <laughs> the most beautiful zombie I've ever seen. <laughs> but here to tell us more about zombie fest happening with the Milton Theater is Fred Munzert. Welcome. Good morning, how are you? Great, you're doing great. Thanks for coming in. So we were reading through this little pamphlet that you have mm -hmm. about zombie fest, and we're pretty excited. Tell us about this year's zombie fest. So it's all new this year. We um, actually, uh, for the first time, are going to be shutting down the entire street in town. Wow. So it's the first time the town of Milton is doing that. Yeah. So it's expanded much larger than it was before. It's all the same things that people love about Zombie Fest. Zombies, obviously. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then we've added so many things to it. So we're bringing back some old things and adding some new things. One of the biggest things we've done is added a lot of vendors. Mm. So we used to have a few vendors because we had a smaller space. Now sure. we have almost 50 vendors that are going to be there. Wow. We have about eight food trucks that are coming out. The bands are playing again this year. We have a whole new line of bands. We have our freak show coming back, which mm. is a favorite of mine. It's sword swallowers and fire breathers and all those kinds of things. And we've doubled the size of it. So it was smaller before. Mm -hmm. Now we have a lot more freak show artists. And they kind of mill in and out of, the, of the day mm -hmm. as things are going on, doing their thing. And we have aerialists as well Ooh. in the freak show. So lots of stuff going on. Yeah. Yeah. Someone also is tying the knot at this wedding. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Two <laughs> zombies, get this, are getting married. For like, real. For real. For real. For real, real. Wedding. Yeah. This isn't <laughs> some fake staged wedding. Tell us about this, please. So we had a contest, and we put it out there th wondering how many people would actually want to get married as mm -hmm. zombies. Had 17 people apply. <laughs> That's insane. <laughs> so there was one lucky couple that w uh, were picked, and they'll be getting married for real that day in front of their family and friends coming dressed as zombies. <laughs> and I'm assuming a lot of people who just want to witness a zombie wedding. I'm sure there are many people. I mean, we would. Yeah, I yeah. totally. Are you kidding? So there's sure. going to be like a zombie bride. Yeah, for sure. That's and uh, coming back again this year, we also have our zombie walk at 8 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And that will um, have anybody who wants to walk and just walk in it. It's kind of an impromptu parade, but it has all of our freak show artists, and the highlight will be, this couple will be the MCs of the parade, because oh, that makes so sense. They'll lead the zombie mm -hmm. horde yeah. for a day. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> so I actually know a couple <laughs> people from Coast TV who went last year, and they dressed up in full zombie gear, and I saw these pictures. I did. They were not recognizable. So people really do come to play. Yeah. Yeah. It's, zombies have become, over the past years, such kind of this subculture following mm -hmm. and so people go all out getting dressed up and some people come as like not zombies and they carry fences like oh. guard from the side <laughs> it's just it's a little bit of everything that goes fun. on so it really is a fun day there's something for everyone we do have a kids fest mm -hmm. as well so we have bouncy houses all kinds of kids carnival games and it it's just a fun day yeah it sounds like a really fun day i mean i know uh this year you guys have a carnival theme so you can have a lot of fun with sort of circus zombies yeah <laughs> do. but i know yeah zombies really are i i took a zombie lit course in college what? Paid for that one. <laughs> <laughs> I would pay too. I would do that. It was really fun. See, okay, wow. this is the right group. Okay, Normally yeah. when I say that, people You're are like, like you paid money for a zombie yeah. lit course? And See, like, there are, yes, people are really into it, so it's, they just keep it quiet. Yeah. It's gotten yeah. huge. So for everybody that wants to check this out, give us the when. What time can people mm -hmm. show up to Zombie so Fest and what day? The 21st, mm -hmm. 4 to 9 p.m. And there, we also have a shuttle, so they can park and follow the shuttle signs and get to, you know, take a shuttle if nice. parking is, is busy, which we expect it to be. And yeah, just come out and have fun. There's stuff going on all day long. If you want to be at a certain thing, you know, you can check out the schedule on our website mm -hmm. that lists everything. We have costume contests going on. We're also bringing back, since before the pandemic, we haven't had our laser light show, Ooh. which once it gets dark, we have laser towers all over town and the lasers are bouncing off the buildings over top the heads of the people. So the really great atmosphere, yes. the town kind of transforms into this post-apocalyptic, you know, zombie town. 
It's fun just to play. Yeah. Which I love for Milton because who thinks Milton like the best zombie fest ever? Yeah, right? Not for everyone sure. passing through Milton. <laughs> this kind of gives Milton some cred. It does. I it like does. it. It does. Gotta okay. get that zombie cred. Yes, definitely. <laughs> uh, Fred, real quick, just before we let you go too, this is also benefiting the town of Milton though. A lot of this money it goes is. back into the community. Just let us know who can benefit from this. So it goes um, to the theater mm -hmm. who sponsors it, also the fire department, and then the food pantry. Amazing. Yeah. Why else would you not go? Right. A great way to help out the community. And like you said, just play and have yes, some fun. We always need a little, little bit more of that. Of course. <laughs> well, we do have some more fun to be had on Coast Life, so don't go anywhere. You're not going to want to miss it. Kites, games, and so much more. You're going to find all of that at the Kite Loft in Ocean City. We're here near 6th Street. I'm with Jay Nur, uh, the owner of Kite Loft. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Thanks for letting me come in and explore this awesome store. I mean, as soon as I walked in, I don't think there's anything that I haven't wanted to like touch or play with. It's a very interactive store. Uh, I guess let's kind of start off with the kites because it's the Kite Loft. Makes sense. What got you interested in, in kites themselves? It's not necessarily something that everybody's had a lot of experience with. Okay, so our slogan is where fun begins. So people come in and we want them to have a good experience in our store. So this is where it happens. I got involved in kites back in 1984. Mm -hmm. I joined the business. Uh, my former partner, Bill Ochi, started the business and uh, I just fell in love with kites and it you know, took off from there. I really wasn't much of a kite flying kid. I mean, even, but I remember coming down to this area for a vacation growing up, you know, you would see these big, bright, beautiful kites and it always looked like so much fun. I feel like if I try to fly a kite, we're going right into the sand. <laughs> so when I was a kid, kites were made out of paper and bamboo sticks. They were hard to fly. <laughs> you had to run forever to try to get them up in the air. It's all different today. They're made out of high-tech materials, fiberglass bars, nylon, easy to fly, no more running. You just hold them up to the wind and they go up. Nice. But the cool thing about kites today, we have them in single line, dual line, or quad line. So you can have an interactive experience with kiting too. Yeah, so the ones with those more lines, you can do like tricks and stuff too. I've seen some people get like, there's like kite competitions. That's absolutely right. And we do one in April uh, at our kite festival. So we have a competition. People com compete with the quad line kites and the dual line kites. And uh, you can manipulate them, maneuver them in any way you possibly can imagine. Yeah, now maybe for, you know, the kids like me that didn't really grow up flying kites, do you do you help anybody out? We do. We do free <laughs> lessons with all our kites. So we'll take you out on the beach right out in front of the store and Perfect. teach you how to fly. It seems intuitive, but you never know, all right? See, you're That's an so expert. Fun. Yay! <laughs> with the one line. <laughs> yeah, I could definitely see how this is such a fun, like, just spend the afternoon or morning doing this. Right. A lot of people will, uh, you know, park out on the beach, yeah. tie them off to their chair. That's true. I guess it's really cool if, like, I don't know if you could bring these on the drive on, but just to, like, to mark your spot, even. So we do that at ST. Yeah. Yeah. That's so. Yeah, we used to just bring a flag to ST, but yeah, I guess right. a, a kite to mark your spot is that's smart. Because <laughs> you can get it up high. Yeah. <laughs> and this style of kite, in particular, is just super, super easy. You know, you can fly them anywhere in any kind of wind. Good beginner friendly. Yes, exactly. Fun. Now, like we said, I mean, there's more than just kites here. It's such a colorful store. You're just walking in, you've got toys, you've got all kinds of stuff for, for anybody looking to complete sort of their family fun or even vacation package. Right, so this is a very interactive store, like I said before. People will come in our store and spend hours and hours. Kids will play with the toys, look at the kites, touch, feel, everything. Mm -hmm. That's what we want. We want everybody to have a great experience in our store. Yeah, and I think being such an interactive store, I mean, a, a lot of times kids, they got a short attention span, you know? What they And I think when a lot of toys and games, maybe parents think about buying online because it's just, it's easy. But if the kid doesn't get a chance to see it, interact right. with it, I feel like they're gonna lose interest even faster than they would uh, normally. So what are some of the advantages to coming into the store, shopping local, and uh, you know, supporting local businesses like this one? So we have a great staff in the summer and they will train you or teach the kids how to play the games. It's not just look at the box. We'll take the game out, we'll show you, we'll play the actual game with you, mm -hmm. or we'll show you how the toy works. Uh, so that's what we want, that great experience. Yeah, so what do your hours look like, especially as I know now we're sort of in the, the local summer, right. <laughs> as they say. So what can shoppers sort of expect, maybe if they are gearing up to do a little bit of early holiday shopping? Sure, well we still have lots of products, something for everybody. Mm -hmm. So this time of year we're open nine to five, summertime we're open nine in the morning till 11 at night. But still there's plenty of time to come in, we're open every day. And uh, we hope to see you here. Yeah, this is a great store for, you know, not just the little kids, the big kids too. I, I've noticed some decor, 
summer, whether it's sort of indoor, outdoor, you guys have a lot of stuff in that area as well, right? Exactly. It doesn't matter whether you're three or 103. We <laughs> have something for everybody. So we have flags, spinners, wind chimes. We have a full line of t-shirts from Life is Good, Simply Southern. Lots of cool products, something for everybody. Awesome. Yeah. Now, Jay, we know we have the big kids, the little kids covered. What about the four-legged friends of the uh, members of the family? Right. We also cover your furry friends. <laughs> so we have a full line of dog and cat toys that uh, they would absolutely have a ball with. Awesome. This is just, it's a great one-stop shop again. I mean, as soon as I walked in, we're like, ooh, colors. And then you also, you do want to just play and, and, and touch everything because there's so much. It's such an interactive store. We can tell you all about it, but you definitely want to get down and check it out for yourself. Again, especially if you do want to kind of get a jump on that holiday shopping. You got a lot of kids to shop for. This is going to be a great place to do just that. <laughs> Stick around though, because there is more Coast Life headed your way. This segment of Coast Life was brought to you by Ocean City Tourism. All right, you guys, before we let you go, we just had to share a couple <laughs> extra details with you. Yeah, we're still on the, we, we haven't quite recovered from Oyster Girl. <laughs> no, so we did some more digging uh, during commercial breaks and all, and we think we found her original video. Uh -huh. So the, the bill was $200, like mm -hmm. we said. Um, now people are making fun of her, though, because apparently she only left $11 as a tip. Ooh. She, she says that she left $11 cash. She ended up leaving more on the receipt. Who knows? Okay. okay. We don't know for sure, but that's what she says. And she says the reason that she may have tipped less than normal is because she had to pay for that man's drink. Like, you expected him to pay for the whole thing. You were mad the first time. Like, you don't get, no, it, no. I think we, we're slowly falling in love with Oyster Girl. Like, we are, yes. There's suddenly an infatuation with her because we just can't get through it. Um, and also just take our word for it that you don't really want to find the original video because Leah almost vomited. If you're like sound sensitive and just yeah. that, if you've got misophonia and the sound of, even just the thought of the sound of slurping oysters is getting to you, like, I don't have that, and I couldn't even listen. Think of the worst way to 48. slurp it. 48 48 slurps. times. <laughs> that poor man probably got through 24 slurps and was like, I have to go home. So we like you, Oyster Man. Oyster Girl, do better. <laughs> yes. So if you're going on a first date anytime soon, <laughs> make sure you don't maybe talk about who's paying the bill. Maybe don't yes. order 48 oysters expecting your partner to, don't, maybe don't order 48 oysters for just you. <laughs> maybe 12. Maybe 12. And maybe use, 48 to split. Yeah. Use the little fork. Move, move, move it around a little bit. Okay, I feel sick. <laughs> <laughs> Let's send it over to our friends at Coast TV 